Hey, what's going on, everyone? How you guys doing today? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater, and this is the the scoops. I got a scoop. I got a hot scoop. Got a hot lead uh, from Mikey Sutton. He he's hooking me up today. Uh, I'm part three of a three part scoop. Now, Lords of the Long Box have got part two, so there will be a link for their scoop, which I don't know about yet. He wouldn't tell me. That's how secretive he's being. But he wouldn't tell me. So you guys want to see that? I will put a link for it in the video description because it comes out before my scoop comes out. But my scoop is very fascinating when it comes to the future of the MCU in regards to the Avengers. But first things first, we need to get a bit of backstory here, which takes us to Mikey's scoop over on his Geekosity All Things Pop Culture. This is his group where he drops scoops multiple times a day. This dude is in it. Now, he says here that Disney wants to buy Spider-Man. And I just want to say, like, yeah, we've I mean, they want it back, really. But they probably will put the money out for it, if not squeeze Sony to the point of where Sony has no other choice than to give it up. And given where things have kind of been already in regards to how Sony came to the table and Sony caved on the deal, it would make sense that Disney's like, well, it's ours. You just haven't signed the paperwork yet. Anyway. Now, he says here, while rumors have circulated before the Sony Disney deal uh, or dispute of such uh, purchase, it was mere speculation, especially the erroneous high number that was quoted. What I'm hearing is that Disney is offering is looking to offer in the range of four to five billion for Spider-Man. But now questions will be asked. But first, four to five billion for Spider-Man. I mean, that that is OK. Think of it like this. They dropped four billion for Marvel back in 2010. They've grossed over $21 billion with Marvel properties. Uh, so it's definitely paid for itself. Then they also bought Lucasfilm for $4.08 billion in 2012. That has since earned itself a profit based on the films that have come out, never mind all the merchandise and everything else that they've done, even though Galaxy's Edge is ultimately kind of setting them back. Dropping four to five million for Spider-Man to you may not or four to five billion to you may not seem like a massive or it may seem like it's an over it's overkill. Not really. Uh, Sony has made around four billion or so with the movies that it's produced outside uh, of the uh, of the of the movies with, uh, with with Marvel. And with those, it's done another two billion. The movie itself does really well. Merchandising rights have been uh, been back with Disney since 2011 uh, when they did a straight vertical trade for the licensing rights from uh, that the licensing fee that Sony had to pay Marvel and, and then also the merchandise that Sony had. So ultimately, Disney came out on top on that deal, but Mar or Sony really needed the money, apparently. So there is that whole thing. But four to five billion, uh, again, makes sense for how many movies are going to put Spider-Man in. It makes sense for what I'm going to be talking about, my specific scoop. And if you think about just the litany of characters that Sony has, if I recall, they've got somewhere in the neighborhood of like 600 characters. Uh, I, if I recall, there's around 600 characters. There are so many characters that they have access to that Kevin Feige and Disney want. And this could be a potential sellout for them. I mean, ultimately, like, like I've said before, Spider-Man is returning back to Marvel one way or another. And if they, they, they might be better off taking the damn deal. They keep saying Sony's not for sale, but again... I just, I just don't think that's going to happen. Now, he goes on to say here that what about Amazon and Apple purchasing Sony? Uh, you know, talks more about um, about like the rights transferring back. So we've already kind of covered that multiple times. But then he goes, uh, what about the, the deal um, Sony just made with Disney? It's perfectly fine, but it's not enough. Both Disney and Sony were under deadline pressures. They had to get something out now so that John Watts could be signed and the screenplay and subsequent pre-production could begin. Negotiations for the purchase of Spider-Man's rights won't happen overnight. In fact, what he's hearing here is the only side he's hearing here is Disney's. He doesn't know how Sony feels about this, but he thinks that uh, his spider sense says that as Sony is willing to sell the rights to Masters of the Universe to Netflix, it's about finding the magic number because everything has a price, which is true. And I talked about that, too. But I talked about that more from the perspective of uh, it, it, it being a, a good way to license the, the rights to Netflix. Not that Netflix, they would buy the distribution rights. They wouldn't buy the outright rights is what I think would more or less happen here. Very similar to how Paramount has sold some movies like Annihilation and Cloverfield Paradox to Netflix. They would work a deal for the streaming rights and probably day and date release because Netflix very much wants that. Even though like movie studios don't, Netflix has the cash and the pull to back it up. And I think that's what we're going to see things. They've been talking about it for years, but we're going to start seeing it 
a, a lot more. Uh, and that's where I think things are currently at with that one. But here's the final part of this. What about the 25% equity stake in the Spider-Man IP that Forbes reported claiming that Disney now has from the deal? If accurate, it's still not enough. Disney will accept this and continue to renegotiate with Sony for future Spider-Man movies and appearances if that's all they can get. But their preference for them is to own him completely and they will go for it. Uh, if it were to happen, perhaps Spider-Man 3 should be called Home for Good, which I think would be a very interesting title for like the fourth Spider-Man movie, which would probably be when this happens. Now, one thing I do want to kind of, uh, I don't know if it's a, my take on it, is that when Forbes talked about the 25% equity, they're the only outlet I've seen talking about the 25% equity. Uh, some people, Mikey here included, believe that the equity is actually in part for the entire brand, the entire thing, but I, I can only find that 25% equity talking about in that Forbes article. My personal take on it is that it's 25% equity in Spider-Man Far From Home 3, or whatever they're going to call it, Spider-Man 3, and then uh, and that's going to include the theatrical as well as the home video uh, and, and digital streaming rights and, I, and profits. And I say that because uh, merchandise, as I've already pointed out, is already owned by, by Disney and Marvel, so they don't need to worry about that. And when it came to the previous deal for Homecoming and Far From Home, they got 5% of first dollar gross. So uh, that was just the first day. That was Thursday night previews and the first day. That was it. Otherwise, they got nothing. I keep seeing that misrepresented too, John Campia. Uh, you know, it's not 5%. Of everything, it's just five percent of the first day. So, so that, uh, so that's really what it boils down to here. That's kind of where we are now. You're caught up if you've already watched the Lords of the Long Box or read this. I apologize, but if you're new here, this is where we currently find ourselves. So, what's my hot scoop? What what am I going to find out here? Well, according to Mikey, the big scoop here is that Spider Man will be leading the Avengers once they're done with Spider-Man 3. If Disney can make this deal work and they have the power and they have the pull and they have the sway and they've got the fans on their side in order to pressure Sony into making this deal work, then for the foreseeable future, they would then start putting him in the new Avengers movies and making him the leader of the new Avengers. I mean, and let's be fair, Spider-Man Far From Home, they set that up. They already set that up. The whole Edith goggles, uh, you know, making sure Nick Fury gave got them to, uh, to to Peter Parker. All the crap that came with that. At the end of the day, he still has them. There's that really sweet scene that for some reason they cut out of the movie where he get he meets with Aunt May again and he wears the glasses and she kind of goes ah, and he's like, oh, they were Tonys and she's like, oh, you'll grow into them, right? I mean, that right there was clearly a hint. That was clearly an Easter egg of what's going on. So if this is a reality, if this is what's going to happen, it would make sense that Marvel would do everything in its power to keep Spider-Man front and center in the MCU. Now, as for Captain Marvel, uh, look, Brie Larson came out today and she said that they have passionately gone after Kevin Feige uh, in order to do a female-led film. And they did that A4 scene in Endgame. That's kind of what prompted it. You know, they spent a whole day just to get that one shot. That's what she said, which is really weird because that shot was really bad. But anyway, that's that's what they want. So uh, having her team up with with Spider-Man and then, you know, make her or make him her bitch, which was kind of one of the rumored point things made absolutely no sense whatsoever. And so Spider-Man knew uh, with the new Avengers or with the Avengers and uh, and then Captain Marvel's got her A-Force and they're going to keep them relatively separated probably for quite some time. At least that's the information that he's giving me. So. That's where we currently find ourselves right here. It's definitely an interesting place. Uh, there's a lot going on. We'll have to wait to see how much of this materializes. I'm actually really excited to see whether or not Spider-Man does take over the Avengers. I know there are people out there who want to just keep him ground level, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, and they don't like the, 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 the new Marvel version of it. But I think there's a lot more people out there that really enjoy the heart and, and, and everything that comes out from these films, from this character, from Tom Holland. And they want to see him continue that. And he clearly wants to continue that. And I think it's better, it's the best for the fans to have him be uh, definitely leading the Avengers and then also involved in more team ups. Because remember, the last scoop that Mikey gave me was basically that Spider-Man and Deadpool could potentially appear in a movie together because they do want to start focusing more on team up films, which makes a lot of sense. If you look at their lineup of what's coming down the pipeline, it's a lot of team up. It's a lot of team up movies or a lot of team up events. And I think that is that's when they know that the cost investment for for getting the movie made or the project made definitely will yield insane results because look at Endgame. 
Look at Infinity War. Look at Captain uh, America Civil War. Look at the Avengers films. Look at all the other ensemble or team up films that they've done. And it works out real well for them because they know that these characters work well when they bounce off one another. And I think Tom Holland does well on his own, but he still needs somebody else there with him, I think. And I think without Robert Downey Jr., it will be very fascinating to see what they do with it. But I, I, I wholeheartedly have faith and trust in Kevin Feige, and I want to see what they do with the next. Anyway, thank you very much again to Mikey Sutton for the, uh, for, for the, for the, for the, for the hot take, for the hot scoop. Check out Lords of the Long Box. I'm going to be linking them below. You can get their take on it. And of course, I'll see you guys later. Have yourself a great day. Please leave a comment. Please like up the video and peace out.